So abstractions, they're our single most powerful weapon in our fight against complexity. But they're often the cause of unnecessary complexity, which is you know, pretty ironic. Now, if you've seen my talk, Seeking Simplicity, and look it up if you haven't, you know that complexity actually arises when things interact or become entangled somehow. So a leaky abstraction is when we have to deal with both the abstraction itself and the thing you're abstracting. So you get the combined complexity of both parts and some emergent complexity as well. So it's, it's a pretty big deal. So what can we do about this? Well, you may know this quote from uh, Joel Spolsky. All non-trivial abstractions are, to some degree, leaky. Now, I think he doesn't go far enough. I would actually argue that if we took out the, the words I've just grayed out, we'll get a much stronger statement. All abstractions are leaky. Is that really true? Well, let me try to convince you. And I'm going to use an example of an abstraction that you're all familiar with. You'll have used it for most of your lives. It's been around for a long time. It's so fundamental that you probably don't even think of it as an abstraction, but it is. And that's numbers. We've had numbers for a long time. They've mostly worked out OK. But like any good abstraction, you know, they've evolved over time. We've added operations. For example, you know, we, we added addition. That's worked out pretty well. But if you can add numbers, you can subtract them as well. So we added subtraction. But then if you can subtract numbers, you'll eventually get back down to, well, zero. But we didn't get that until about the second century, which means for probably thousands of years, this abstraction was leaking. But we carried on. We, we added multiplication. And, and that's OK. But if you multiply, you can divide as well. And now we've got division. We've got zero. What happens if you mix those two? Well. We didn't really even start asking that question until about the seventh century, and we still haven't fully answered it today. It mostly just depends. Another really leaky abstraction. And it gets even more fun when you talk about square roots. What happens if you take the square root and the negative number? I mean, we know now, we've got this whole branch of mathematics around imaginary numbers. It turns out to be surprisingly useful. But you know, we discovered this in about the 16th to 18th century. Were square roots we discovered in the 16th to 18th century BC. So this was leaking for about three and a half thousand years. Now, I don't know about you, but my time scales and my normal software development projects are a little bit shorter than that. So, you know, what chance do we really have? There's a whole page on Wikipedia about the evolution of numbers and covers most of what we've just been talking about. I like this bit at the end of this quote. You know, there's sometimes additional objects. So, just hedging, really. It's just a bit of a fudge factor. So yeah, all abstractions are leaky. We're going to have to embrace that. So what can we do? Well, th there's some obvious things. We can start small and relatedly, we can try to keep our abstractions simple, which is you know, easier said than done, but really to see how we're going to do this. I argue that we can um, divide our abstractions into two broad buckets. The first bucket are what I call global abstractions. And these are things like you know, large libraries or frameworks that are widely used, or, or languages. C++ itself is an abstraction. And you want those to be as complete and as watertight as possible. You know they're going to get there 100%, but it's worth investing the effort to get as close as you can, because you know, people rely on that. On the other side, we've got what I call local abstractions. These are the things you have in your own code base. You own both sides of them. You see both sides. You have to deal with both sides. And you're going to use abstractions, but you don't want the abstractions to get in the way. So keep them shallow. Well, when was the last time you were, you were debugging some complex problem and you had to go through layers of abstractions to get to the actual thing that was going wrong? It just gets in the way. Keep them as shallow as you can. Use them just as a tool for managing complexity. Don't let them become the cause of the complexity itself. So embrace their leakiness. So yeah, all abstractions are leaky, so embrace leaky abstractions. Thank you.